cold calling is one of the most effective strategies to generate more leads and close more deals. So I'm gonna give you some of my top tips when it comes to cold calling so that you can crush your cold calls, hit your numbers, and get those fat commissions. And they absolutely do work because I have personally tried them myself on my cold calls during my time at Oracle. And I know for sure that if you do follow these strategies, you're gonna find it very effective. Now, before we get started, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And let's go ahead and dive right in. If you wanna be good at cold calling, the first thing you need to understand that you need to get the other person to like you as a person. And the thing is, people will make a split decision within the first five seconds of meeting you on whether or not they're gonna like you, right? That might sound crazy. How do you know you like someone if you only met them for five seconds? Well, the truth is that's how it works, right? People will judge you based on how you look and how you sound, not necessarily the words you say. Now, when you're cold calling, they can't see you, but they can hear you. So 70% of whether or not someone likes you is gonna be based on your tonality, around 30% is gonna be based on the words you're actually saying. So for tonality, what does that actually mean and how can you use it to crush your cold calls? Well, here's the thing. You just gotta get the person to like you based on how you sound. If I were giving someone a cold call and I sounded like this, hey John, how's it going? It's Patrick from Microsoft. You think the other person on the other line is going to like me as a person? Probably not. But if I was speaking really slow like this, hey John, it's um, Patrick, uh, how are you doing today? Of course, they're probably gonna hang up. They're not gonna like me. They're not gonna want to do anything with me. So what is an effective tonality that you can use and borrow? Well, there's many different styles. Just because I say something, it doesn't mean it's gonna be the magic silver bullet, but it has worked for me and it has worked for many of my students. I've trained over 100,000 people have been through my courses already. So definitely it does work for many people. For me, I like to approach the situation in a very cool, relaxed, calm, but assertive tonality. So I'll probably be like this. Hey, John, it's Patrick from Microsoft. How are you doing today? So what I'm doing, is like, I'm not speaking too fast. I'm not speaking too slow. My voice is kind of calm, but there's some energy to it, right? It's not like I'm totally chill, like I'm chilling on the couch. It's like I'm assertive, but I'm not aggressive, right? Hey, John, how's it going? It's Patrick from Oracle. How are you doing today? John's probably gonna say, oh yeah, I'm doing all right. Uh, who is this again and what's up? So that's essentially how I would get them to start the conversation, right? So it doesn't really matter what you say, as long as you say something that gets them, you know, to trust you on that first five seconds. Now for opening lines, you know, there's many different variations that you can do. For me, I personally like, hey, how you doing today? Usually like pretty much like 99% of the time, they'll be like, yeah, I'm doing good. That's enough for me to get to the next part of my sales script. Now other people, they don't necessarily like that because it's an open-ended question. What if they say no, right? And a lot of people, because if they don't nail their tonality down, you know, sometimes they'll get a negative reaction, right? Now, another alternative line that you can use is this. Hey, John, it's Patrick from Microsoft. Did I catch you at a bad time? Typically, people will be like, yes or no. Nine out of 10 times, they're probably gonna say, no, what's up? Or even if they did say yes, they're gonna be like, yeah, you did catch me a bad time, but what's up, right? So they, they're still on the phone. They, you got them on the phone, right? So now you just gotta use your tonality to get the person to like you. Now we've passed the first five seconds. Now you gotta walk them through the script. So the next technique that I use is, is kind of advanced. It definitely does work because I've used it so many different times. It's rooted in human psychology, right? And I'll explain why. Now, of course, when people are watching this, they're gonna be like, oh, no, that doesn't work and this and that. Maybe it doesn't work for some people based on your personality and your style and your tonality, but if it does work for some people, then it absolutely does work, right? So for human psychology, the thing is, if somebody asks for help, right? If somebody asks you for help on the street, typically most people will want to help that person in need. So if you were traveling in Japan, for example, and you're a foreigner in Japan, and you just go up to a random person who barely speaks English and you say, hey, I'm a little lost. Um, can you help me find the train station? Most of the time, they're going to say, sure, it's over here. Or they'll pull up Google Maps and be like, oh, it's over there, right? Because like, why wouldn't they want to help someone that's lost? They're not going to be like, oh, get away from me, right? As long as you're like a nice looking person, should be fine. Using that same psychology, you're just applying it in to sales. Typically what I would say is, hey, John, I'm actually a little lost. Do you mind if I take a second and tell you why I'm calling? On the other line, the other person's gonna be like, uh, sure, what's up, right? They wouldn't deny someone help. This works really well if you're talking to, let's say a receptionist, for example, someone who's redirecting calls because it's literally their job to redirect you anyways, right? Or even if you're talking to, let's say a director, a VP, executive, whatever the case is, even if you use that line, they'll be like, okay, well, maybe I can just point you into another direction or maybe you need my help. I don't know where you're coming from, but I, I wanna hear it, right? So you're just piquing their curiosity and you're using the fact that when you ask for help, people typically will help you. I mean, that's just the reality of human nature, right? So the next part,
part is you're essentially setting an agenda or they also call it like an upfront contract or just setting expectations for the call. You're not really selling anything on the next stage yet. You're just kind of telling them what's going to happen and you're getting them to say yes or no. If they say yes to this uh, agenda that you're going to be putting together, then you open the conversation to actually having a real sales call. If they say no, or you want to call back another time, then that's totally okay. So here's how you're going to do it. And the main important thing is you want to explain why you're calling and what the other person can expect on this particular call and also how long it's going to take. Hey, John, I'm a little lost. Do you mind if I take a second to tell you why I'm calling? John will say, all right, sure, what's up? From there, what you're gonna say is, hey, I'm part of the marketing team at Studio XYZ, and I noticed your company was putting up a lot of YouTube videos and podcasts on YouTube, which is absolutely great. What I actually do is I help companies, you know, take those YouTube videos and turn it into shorts and post it on different social media sites like TikTok, YouTube shorts, and things like that in order for you to get more attention. And I noticed that you haven't really started doing that yet. So the reason why I'm calling is because I wanted to take five minutes to see if it would make sense for us to work together in some way. And if it does, great, we can move on to the next step. But if not, totally fine. Is that okay with you? In that particular situation, in this context, right, if someone is actually, let's say, a podcaster and they're putting out podcasts, long form content, but they're not turning it into shorts. And it's obvious that shorts is the way to go because it's like free content, essentially. They haven't done it. Maybe they want to learn about how it can be done. If it only takes five minutes, they know what they're going to expect on the call. They know what value they're going to get. They know how long the call is going to take, and it's not going to take that long. And then they could either say yes, and it's okay for them to say no, because you just told them like, hey, you know, if it makes sense to work together, great but if not, totally okay, right? That's the line that you use and there's no pressure, literally no pressure at all. They can say yes or no at any time and that's it. And so typically what happens when you do this and you you know, you know, get your product market fit, right? And you actually provide some kind of value in this conversation that makes sense for the person, they're gonna say, yeah, sounds good to me. And then you start the call. Now from there, what's gonna happen is you're going to actually begin the sales call, right? You know, sales calls, you know, it can get really in depth and I have more videos explaining exactly how to run the sales call, but essentially the next line after you set the agenda for the call is basically you're gonna ask a question to get the call going. And typically what I would like to do is I would like to use some kind of data point first, give them my insight on that data point, and then I would ask a question. Top of my head, I would say something like, hey, you know, so I noticed that you posted a lot of long form content on YouTube. And right now, you know, a lot of people are getting a lot of attention and new subscribers by just taking their long form content and turning into shorts. And I was curious to understand if this was something that your team has already been working on or not. And then they would say, oh no, you know, we just haven't had the time to do it. And then you would just start the sales call from there. And typically all you have to do is ask questions, understand the pain and solve those pains, which I have more videos about, which you should subscribe to my channel so you can find them. And so if you enjoyed this video and you got some value about how to actually cold call, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe and leave a comment on whether or not you think these lines will work. With that said, I'm gonna see you in the next one.